There has been a lot of hype in the media about global warming, strictly speaking for about 15 years now, so what's it all about? If you're confused, I can help you. I can't do much about the horny thing though, sorry. Global warming is the theory that the Earth is getting gradually hotter. Anthropogenic global warming is the theory that it's getting hotter and we are the cause. Now you may be thinking to yourself, hang on, I know this, isn't this just a theory thing? Yes, but it's a scientific theory, which in practical terms means it's a fact. Unhappily, the word theory has been ruined by the creationist soundbite, it's just a theory. For example, how we deal with infection relies on germ theory, and our understanding of how things behave at the quantum level is called quantum theory. When it comes to the creationism versus evolution debate, never before in the field of human rhetoric have so few said so little to so many. And it's a bit like that with anthropogenic global warming. There is this bizarre notion that anyone, or at least a few self-proclaimed experts, can quickly dismiss the decades of work by thousands of scientists in hundreds of nations. This is clearly nonsense. So what do you need to know? Not much, really. Almost all climatologists, and there are thousands of them worldwide, now agree that global warming is happening and we are the cause. This will have a range of effects, but rising sea levels are the most obvious negative example. Hundreds of millions of people worldwide live in low-lying coastal areas. What should you do? Use less energy. Well, yes. Unless you plan to get a PhD in climatology and author an extensive set of compelling peer-reviewed papers and convince 50% of your peers that they've been wrong for the last 15 years. Pretty much. Still not convinced? Let me try and put some flesh on the bones. First, let's look at the scientific method. Professor A comes up with hypothesis X to explain Y. Professor B comes up with hypothesis Z to explain the same thing. Both have followers and detractors, and this pits thousands of scientists in an academic cockfight to the death to be right. Eventually a body of evidence builds which gradually pulls more and more scientists into one camp or the other, leaving generally, but not always, either Professor A or B on their own. Being right is critically important for scientists, not because they are good people, but because every claim is reviewed in excruciating detail, often by thousands of peers, many of whom have a vested interest in proving you wrong, and if possible exposing you as a charlatan. This vulnerability exerts relentless pressure in the evidence-based direction. So, why am I telling you this? With regard to anthropogenic global warming, this process has already happened. An hypothesis has prevailed, it has been tested, it has been proven, it is morphed into a theory, and remember for theory, read fact. The vast majority of relevant experts agree we are the cause of global warming. Now, if nine electricians tell you that your house is dangerously miswired, and one plumber reassures you that it's fine, is the jury really still out? Let's not get hysterical, though. This is going to play out over several decades at least, and probably more like a hundred years. However, the world currently has more than 6.5 billion inhabitants. That's 5.5 billion more than just 200 years ago. So we really don't have much room for maneuver. Consider that with extending lifespans in the developed world, if you're under 50, you're going to see some of this. Even if you live on a mountain in the Rockies, you are going to be affected by weather, resource shortages, and social upheaval. Hundreds of millions over the coming decades may be impacted by climate change affecting food production, rising sea levels, overpopulation and disease. So what should we do? Well, there's no need for a hair shirt just yet. Or even a radical restructuring of the global economy, as long as we get started now. You can walk and cycle, insulate your home and triple glaze, heat with something other than oil or electricity, turn off appliances at night, telecommute, Find electrical providers that promote renewables. If you're rich, install solar and or wind power. Buy a hybrid and run it on your home generated power. Think energy when buying a home, appliances or installing major systems. Vote, if you can, for green parties. Do something. Every little bit helps. 